so excited to support you today and what we're going to look at today is how to how to get over your fear of marketing yourself as a coach so i'm live here on um on facebook and on instagram so hello 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 <laughs> Um, and today I'm talking about how to get over your fear, how to get over your fear of marketing yourself as a coach. So as always, I'm Rebecca Lockwood, your neuro-linguistic programming trainer, hypnosis trainer and breakthrough coach trainer. And I'm super excited to be answering this question that, get asked, that gets asked all of the time. Okay, so how to get over your fear of marketing yourself as a coach. Right, so when it comes to marketing yourself as a coach and marketing your services, it's really important to make sure that you're focusing on your customer, right? You're focusing on your customer. One of the biggest mis mistakes that I see coaches make is that they focus on themselves and not on their customer and that's why they start to get this fear come up and I did it as well in the beginning, right? I did it as well in the beginning and what happened was I got all up in my head and I had all these this negative self-talk and, and limiting beliefs and I had this um, maybe even imposter syndrome right maybe even imposter syndrome so I'm going to talk you through the steps that I took which supported me to market and, and have a sales plan that was consistent that supported me to get rid of the fear right um, and the first thing to do really is to make sure that you are focusing your marketing on your customer right on your customer and not on you so a lot of online coaches and even online businesses as well but a lot of online coaches get mixed up and they think that they have to talk about um something inspirational right and they think they have to create content that's inspirational and motivating for their potential customers and this is just not the case right you don't have to do this it can be part of your marketing strategy but it shouldn't be the entire marketing strategy um and when we market ourselves effectively as a coach you have to position yourself as the expert and you do this by showing your potential customer that you know what you're talking about right when it comes to solving their problem right that you know what you're talking about when it comes to solving their problem and that's really important because although within our content we can have we can have elements of things that we've achieved and things that we've overcome and a bit about our own story, the main bulk of our marketing plan should really be answering your customer's questions, right? And showing your customer or potential customer how and why you are the expert in the problem you're helping them solve, why you're the expert and why they should be coming to you for that help and to get the outcome that they want. Right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to ensure that you have the right coach training. And I say this all of the time, and it's because it is really, really important, right? And I felt like swearing then to make my point of how important it, how important it is, right? Have the right coaching training. Now, the reason why this is the most important is because when you have the right training and you are fully qualified to be able to support your potential clients with the problems that they have, that that takes away that competence thing, right? It takes away the competence thing. You will be competent in supporting your clients or potential clients with the problems and the outcomes that they want because you're fully trained to be able to support them. Okay, you're fully trained to be able to support them. So when you um, when you train properly and you have proper training in coaching, um, and I recommend make sure you're training it in neuro-linguistic programming because there are so much and so many tools and techniques you can use to apply in a coaching relationship. I only ever teach coaching and NLP together because I think it, it should be taught together. Um, when you when you are fully trained it'll filter through into your marketing, right? It'll filter through into your marketing and it'll make marketing so much easier for you. The second thing that you need to do is work on your limiting beliefs. And again, I say this a lot, right? I say this a lot because this really is the answer to a lot of the questions that I get asked. So whether it's that you are 
feeling not confident as a coach, you're feeling not competent as a coach, you don't want to market as a coach, you feel uncomfortable marketing, you feel uncomfortable selling. All of this boils down to what are the beliefs that you have around this thing, whatever it is, and in this case it's marketing, and what are the stories that you're telling yourself that are stopping you from taking the action, right? So when you have had the right training, you can use that training and that training should include how to get rid of limiting beliefs. When you've had the right training, you can consistently apply that to yourself and consistently get rid of your limiting beliefs as they come up, right? As they come up. Now, the example that I told you, you know, I used to I used to get up in my head and focus my marketing on myself, right? And and part of it was because I was scared about what other people would say, what other people would think, what other people would what other people's perceptions would be and it worried me right so I started my um coaching business right at the start of when Facebook live started so I think it was about the same time just before Facebook live started and then Facebook live kind of came on the scene and everyone was like oh that's how you should market your business you should be going live on Facebook um, and and inviting people to watch your Facebook lives and I pooped my pants right <laughs> I pooped my pants because everyone on my Facebook knew me from school, knew me from when I was a naughty teenager, you know, when from times where I definitely wouldn't, I definitely wasn't showing up as my best self, right? It was the traumatic parts of my life um, and the negative experiences that I'd gone through and events that I'd gone through in my life and everybody on my Facebook at that time were people who knew me then, right? Who didn't necessarily know that I'd, I'd gone through training as a coach and, and in neuro-linguistic programming and used hypnosis to heal myself, right? And, and and they didn't know that stuff. So I was scared of going live and, and talking about mindset stuff and how we can live our best selves because I was scared of what then people might think, right? So I had all of these limiting beliefs coming up, all of these limiting beliefs around um, what people would say, what people would think, um, about what I do and and so I had to use what I knew in NLP and coaching because I had the right training right which is the training that I deliver now and I used all that stuff and applied it to myself right so I applied it to myself and I asked myself what are the fears I have right now what are the limiting beliefs I have right now what are the stories that I have that I'm telling myself that's limiting me from getting the outcome that I want which is marketing my coaching business okay so work on your limiting beliefs and when you've got number one covered and you have the right coach training, you should learn within your training how to eliminate limiting beliefs for your clients and also for yourself, right? So within our training, we ensure that you have numerous techniques that you can use to get rid of limiting beliefs, rewrite your stories and reprogram your mind as well. Um, so I've popped, if you're on Instagram, there is a, a link in my bio that you can check out to check out our training. Um, and if you're on Facebook, watch him. It's in the show notes, in, in the show notes, that's on the podcast, um, it's in the notes, in the description, and if you're listening to the podcast on, on repeat, um, which we do use these videos for, then it's in the show notes. Okay, so number one was make sure you've got the right training. Number two, work on your limited beliefs. So if you've got the right training, you should also know how to do this, you should know how to be able to work on your limited beliefs. The third thing is to really understand your customer, right, really understand your customer. Always be curious about what your customer wants, what they're asking for, and what they tell you their challenges are. Don't make assumptions, right? Don't think that you know this without asking them, because you could find if you're assuming what your customer wants and what they need, and you've not asked them, it's possible that you may be marketing the wrong thing, right? You may be marketing the wrong thing. Um, and it might be that the work that you do doesn't change for the challenge or the problem that the person perceives to have it just might be that the way that you market it in terms of the questions that you answer the words that you use the content that you create has to just slightly just differ slightly um, in order to support and, and speak to them people right so it's really important to speak to your customer and really understand them send out surveys ask them when if you've got a facebook group um, and a facebook group is a really powerful way of really understanding your customer and really researching your customer because when people join your group you can ask them a series of questions and collect the information that they're giving you in their words in their words and their language, not your own, in their words and their language. And then you can use that to really make sure that you're marketing yourself in the right way and you're working the right way and you're doing the right things in order to support the, the potential clients that you wanna work with, right? So number four, 
kind of ties in with number three, um, which is always be curious about your customer. So, um, so sorry, that's number three. Number four, ask your customer what they need help with consistently ask them it's not good enough to ask them once every six months you need to ask them consistently so if you do have something like a facebook group or you're in other people's facebook groups what you can do is you can either if you've got your own facebook group um, and i talk about this a lot as well because it's really important is you can ask a series of questions when people join your group and then you can store them questions in something like a spreadsheet or something and um, so you've got them so when you're creating content you know what what kind of stuff to look at or you can search keywords in other people's Facebook groups. So if you don't have your own Facebook group and you don't want a Facebook group, that's fine. You don't have to have a Facebook group, right? We don't always have a Facebook group. We've only got one at the moment because we're doing a lot of research and really understanding to a really deep level what our customer wants and what they need help with, right? And we really want to make sure that we're serving um, to our highest possible standard in, in, in the best possible way that meets the needs of the people who we want to work with. So if you don't want to have a Facebook group, then you can search keywords in other people's Facebook groups, but make sure that then Facebook groups still contain the kind of people that you want to work with, right? And then what you'll find is that um, when you search the keywords in Facebook groups, comments and phrases and challenges will come up in what people are saying. So you can you can keep that information. I'm not saying um, that you should look at who the person is and <laughs> or anything like that. I'm just saying that if you do search them keywords, you'll be able to see what kind of things they're talking about around that problem, what language they're using, what they're saying they need help with. And then number five, create content that solves that problem, right? And this is why when I said at the beginning, a lot of coaches get mixed up and think that they need to post inspirational quotes and inspirational and motivational um, quotes and, and stories and things like this and that it can be part of a marketing strategy and um, in fact we do that we do do that but that's not our our main marketing strategy right and it's not the thing that gets results that gets a bit of engagement and a, and a bit of likes and, and that's it the content that's going to get you results and get potential clients is the content that answers the clients the potential clients questions um, and shows them that you are the expert in solving their problem right so it, your content needs to really show your potential customer that you can solve their problem um, and the content may even start to solve their problem for them um, or at least shows them why you know how to solve their problems and positions you as an expert right so when you know what your customer really needs help with, you can create content that speaks directly to that problem and supports them to move in the right direction. So they may start to get results by going through your content that you create for free. And then the natural next step for them would be to then work with you further and start to pay for your services. Right. So never be afraid of giving away support and content for free in your marketing because this will create a natural next step for your potential customers and you will be the first person that they'll think of because they've already got results from the free content that you create and then the natural next step and, and you're the first person that they're gonna think about, right? If they need help with something and they've started to get results from your free content, they're gonna be thinking, well, imagine if this is the free content, how much value I've got from this, imagine how much support I'm going to get when I do actually work with this person right so um a little bit of a side note which will help as well when it comes to marketing um is so i said to you at the beginning i said if you're on facebook with me now in the description there is the details of our new linguistic programming and breakthrough coaching program there's also our free coaching download that you can download as well if you're on instagram it's over in the link in the bio and also we use this video in our podcast so you may have also heard me say it, it's in the show notes by accident, right? <laughs> and, and what we do with our content is we do a weekly live video which answers a question that our, that our potential customer asks, um, giving value and support. And then we do, a, I'm, I'm live on Facebook right now, I'm live on Instagram right now, and then we also use this for the podcast. We put it on Instagram TV, we use it in our blog, we use it in our newsletter, we create graphics from it. So we do a lot with this content. Um, and so once you've got really solid content that answers your customers' questions and, and shows them that you are the person that can support them, um, Firstly, you can use that content everywhere. And secondly, always make sure you have a call to action. So our call to action is either to check out our Neuro Linguistic Programming and Breakthrough Coaching Program, or to download our free coaching guide, right, which supports you with a step-by-step -step process on how to create and, and grow a successful coaching business.
So that's it from me today. I hope this was helpful. I always try and keep it short and sweet and under to, to, sort of 10 minutes, but I think we went over that a little bit. Um, as always, I'm Rebecca Lockwood, your New World Linguistic Programming Trainer, Hypnosis Trainer and Breakthrough Coach Trainer. And um, We do have a full New World Linguistic Programming and Breakthrough Coach Program. So if you do want to check out the details for all that, if you're on Instagram, you can find them in the link in the bio. If you're on Facebook, you can find them in the description above. And if you're listening to the podcast on repeat, you can find them in the show notes.